Welcome to Young Compass. We're with special guest Sharice today. Sharice graduated from UCLA with a degree in biology and a minor in anthropology and global health. Sharice, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So we're going to talk about biology a little bit. This is a study that as a kid you take in elementary, middle school, high school, but what is biology at the university level? Well, biology is a pretty big field. It depends on where you go into it. Biology is basically a study of life. So life can extend from plants, worms, fishes, yeah. humans. Yeah. So whatever you're most interested in, um, the field I took it, in was evolutionary and ecology biology. So evolutionary biology, can you explain what evolution is? Evolution is the study of how things change over time. Right. So that, it's very general, but literally anything you touch has evolved over time. If totally. This chair has evolved over time. Yeah. So the, with humans and animals, that, that's what it is. So over time, what features of the animal makes them most successful at reproducing at avoiding predators at getting prey. The most fit are animals with the adaptations that make that specific individual produce the most and have the most successful offspring. So it's not just about producing the most, but it's about having the offspring that can produce more. So it's about the generation after you. And then ecology, what does mm -hmm. ecology stand for? Basically the study of interaction between animals and plants and yeah. All living things and the non-living things. Yeah. Oh, non-living things. <laughs> yeah, living what, and non-living things. Would that be um, things like geology or? Yeah. So interaction of humans with um, maybe like the way the landscape is formed, like that is also ecology. Yeah. So evolution doesn't happen if there's no interaction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there has to be. A... Mm -hmm. There's a driver for it, and the driving it. force is the interaction. Of it. What was it about the evolutionary and ecology that gravitated? Um, you towards it? Well, for me, I just wanted to go into biology as a general major because right. I wanted to go pre-med. Um, so, and I didn't know exactly, like, specifically what I wanted to learn, so I thought, okay, like, a broad general biology is good for me. Right. Little did I know that going into biology at UCLA is EEB. Like, they take That's you straight into evolutionary ecology biology, yeah. Were there any other highlights of biology? I think the biggest thing about EEB is that you get to go out a lot. Like you go to the fields a lot. We, for EEB 100 lab, we mm -hmm. went hiking like almost every other week. What did you do on the hikes? We looked at plants. We, we had these tools, they were like sort of grids. Okay. And you would put it down on the floor and you just look at the grid, grid and then you count the number of whatever plants there are and you talk about the biodiversity there. Uh, so basically you're doing what um, scientists would do if they were out in the field and actually sure. like learning about the world, yeah. but on a very small scale. Okay. And so we went on hiking trips and we talked about the plants, we talked about the birds, we talked about the community, we talked yeah. about how the grass or whatever grows differently in different parts of the mountain. Okay. Were you yourself interested in plants? Like oh, yeah. I never was interested in plants, honestly. When I took the, what's funny was I, I took um, one of the, the, my plant ecology class because uh -huh. my roommate was taking it. Plant ecology. And I ended up loving it just because of, you know, learning about things that I never thought about before. Do you remember anything that stood out? Yeah, a lot of it, there was um, a lot of terms for why plants have the shapes that they do. For example, um, how leaves are shaped and how that reflects the um, climate of the area. So uh, like in the desert, you have like the spiny, um, the spiny, the thorny looking plants because they want to conserve their water and they don't want to lose too much to the, to the sun because so, it's hot. So what are the spikes? Thorns? So the spikes keep it, keeps the surface area small. Uh, against the sun so they can still photosynthesize but they won't lose water from the evaporation so you uh, learn about how like physics play a role in yeah. plants and you learn about how the climate and how different animals interact with the plants plants are out there too trying to make a life for themselves yeah yeah, yeah. trying to protect their their, their life breed. on earth man how how did you spend your time in the major was it studying for lectures and tests? Was it group projects? Um, it depended on the class. 
right. most of it was rewatching the lectures, learning about what the professor actually said. They were mostly papers and. Well, what kind of papers were you reading? Research papers. For 186, we had, I think my topic was on autoimmune disease. I think it was rheumatoid arthritis. Right. It's not just about that specific disease, it's about the evolution of that uh, disease too. Evolution of a disease, I'm trying to capture what that really means. It's about why it exists in your oh, body. So what's like, the reason? What's the yeah, evolutionary yeah, reason for so it? So why do we even have autoimmune disease? Do you have any other interesting examples from evolution? One of it was like, why, why is myopia a thing? Yeah, 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 right? talk about that. That is an evolutionary reason because it, it's like, okay, we're not adapted to look at only close things. We're adapted to see far away so that we could spot sure. predators. So it's, it's really understanding the evolution of why diseases are, why, they, why we have disease in the first place. Yeah, the wide of known example is obesity. Yeah, yeah. So we're it's not evolved to be eating this much and like not active at all so like we went through a lot of famines way long mm -hmm. ago for our body to hold on to fat is evolutionary advantageous because in the in the, the way that we were adapted the environment that we were adapted in we we're supposed to hold on to as much calories as we possibly totally. could otherwise we would die yeah but now it's not that way. So that was that's that's one of the biggest things. I think that we talk about that in almost every class that we were <laughs> hey, in. So so that's interesting. So in, the, in some of these classes, you see some of these same examples pop yeah, up. Because yeah, because it's like the, the epitome of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's what the it's the about. it's the classic example mm -hmm. with the with the faculty and the the major itself. Did you find any that stood out in terms of what they taught? I think the general trend with uh, profession professors here was that. I, I loved most of them for the fact that they actually really cared about wanting the world to be a better place. Okay. Um, that it was always about us working together to make the world a better place. And the best professors I had always ended with that yeah. sort of mindset right. and wanted us to grow from it. Yeah. Um, so that's what sort of what I looked for in the class um, that it brought people together and like brought ideas together. Yeah, when they looked at making the world a better place, what were the pressing issues that these professors focused on? It was mostly uh, global global warming, like environmental issues. That's yeah. like a big part of being in EEB, the environmental part of it. So uh, a big part of the study, at least for you with your minors and all that, was getting an awareness of the problems. Yeah. That yeah. foundation. That was that was pretty much college. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Understanding the problems. Open the your world. mind to what's out there. Yeah. What's really going on? Mm -hmm. So now that you've done bio and you've come out the other side, what is um, a reason that you'd suggest someone to pursue it? I think that to go into bio, you you want to learn about your surroundings. It's it's, it's a place to go into to basically explore the world, and not just a human world, but just yeah the world in general, like the, the <coughs> nature, the way things evolve, the way things are, be ready to be amazed yeah. by how big the earth is and how big nature is. In the next video, we'll hear about some of the classes that Sharice took in her lower division and upper division at UCLA.